In the realm of Aurea, the king and his knights hunt a dragon over the hills. They pursue the beast into a cave, where the group is shocked by what they find. At that point, the dragon flies in and breeds fire, killing most of the knights at once, before using her tail to trap and kill the surviving knights one by one. Finally, she approaches the monarch, who falls to his knees and waits for the finish. Many years later, Floria and Elodie cut any wood they could find in a northern nation. They are the local lord's daughters, and are doing all they can to support their people, who are starving and freezing due to the harsh winter. Every day, more people leave, meaning they may soon lose their town entirely. Suddenly, the sisters see a carriage passing by, which is unusual since they rarely have guests. They return home to discover their father, Lord Bayford, and stepmother, Lady Bayford, speaking with a nun about what Elodie would do before departing. Lord Bayford then informs Elodie that Aurea's royal family wants her to marry their prince. Elodie initially refuses, but Bayford convinces her, when he explains that their village will receive enough money to preserve their lives for many years. Some time later, the family sets sail for Aurea. When they approach their destination, the ship enters a dense mist, and the crew is terrified by some mysterious creatures in the darkness, which turn out to be two massive dragon sculptures. When they arrive, the family is astounded by the area's affluence and the beauty of the castle. The servants led them to their rooms and told them that they would see the royal family the next day. Elodie walks to the balcony to take in the view and observes a girl her age on another balcony, whom a maid quickly carries away. Elodie couldn't sleep that night, so she sketched instead. Then she walks to the balcony for fresh air and observes that the other girl's room has no lights. She is also astonished to see candles in the distance, indicating that someone is climbing the mountain in the middle of the night. The following day, Elodie's family meets with the royals. Queen Isabel sends Elodie to spend time with Prince Henry before the wedding. Following the initial discomfort, Elodie and Henry began a lovely chat. After Henry acknowledges Elodie's creative abilities in her letter, she inquires about the candles she saw last night. Henry says it is one of three traditional rituals honoring their ancestors, so the wedding is on the same day. Meanwhile, Lord Bayford finishes discussing the transaction with Isabel at the castle and seems disturbed. Lady Bayford checks on him, but he snaps and claims nothing is wrong. Lady Bayford then attempts to talk to Isabel, who is not pleased. When Lady Bayford adds that she believes the families should unite and get along, Isabel responds that this is just a transaction developed out of necessity. She needs a princess and Bayford's territory needs money. She also tells Bayford that she is the daughter of a rope manufacturer and should not forget her place. Lady Bayford observes Isabel saying Elodie's name incorrectly and attempts to correct her, but Isabel ignores and goes. In the evening, a concerned Lady Bayford informs Elodie that something suspicious is going on and she believes the wedding should be canceled. But before they can talk, Lord Bayford arrives and puts everyone to bed. The following morning, the maids helped Elodie prepare for the event. She's dressed well, with a blunt dagger and a perfume diffuser. The wedding goes well. Henry and Elodie exchange rings and kiss, and Elodie receives her crown. Elodie then bids her goodbyes to her family and boards a carriage with Henry, who explains that they will attend the ancient ritual on the mountain. They climb a rough flight of steps, and Elodie is surprised to see a group of individuals wearing strange golden masks, not to mention Isabel dressed as a nun. The queen hands Elodie a coin, stating that she will help hard the kingdom. They walk inside as Isabel tells a story. When their ancestors came to this island, they found a dragon, the last of its generation. The dragon attacked the town as soon as it realized the people had settled down. So the king assembled his troops and attempted to combat the beast. However, the dragon killed everyone but the king, who was forced to give up his three daughters so that the island might be shared. 
Elodie notes how everyone looks creepily at her while listening to the narrative and that they are crossing a precarious bridge over an abyss. Before chopping Henry and Elodie's hands, Isabel explains that the king's sacrifice is celebrated every generation. She presses them together to mix their blood and covers them with a cloth, saying that Elodie is now legally of royal blood. Elodie then tosses the coin into the gap, believing she has completed the ceremony. Henry picks her up to take her over the bridge, but he apologizes and throws her into the chasm. Elodie falls, screaming, into a mud pool, where she passes out. She wakes up seconds later with bruises all over her body, but she sits up and begins crying for help. No one remains on the bridge, yet her voice awakens the dragon buried deep inside the cave. Elodie screams as her desperation turns to wrath, and she takes off the beautiful jewelry before attempting to climb out. Unfortunately, she falls again, suffering another injury. At that point, she notices other jewelry that isn't hers and understands that the royals have been sacrificing females to the dragon for years. Suddenly, she hears a disturbance and turns around to see a light inside a cave. She enters and sees a bird on fire. Elodie instantly uses earth to extinguish the fire, but it is too late. The bird has already died. Suddenly, a roar resonates through the tunnel and hundreds of fire birds emerge. They swoop over Elodie for a few minutes before dropping dead all around her. With the tiny corpses functioning as lights, Elodie searches for an escape, only to pause as she notices the dragon approaching. Elodie flees behind a stalagmite as the dragon begins speaking. The dragon claims that every generation of royalty must pay and that she can smell it in Elodie's blood. Looking at her scar, Elodie knows the ritual was performed to fool the dragon. The dragon instructs Elodie to flee, and she does so while screaming, managing to reach a tunnel as the dragon breathes fire behind her. The flames penetrate the tunnel, but Elodie finds a safe position just in time. There's a burned corpse, and she recognizes it as the girl she saw on the balcony. When Elodie hears the dragon approaching again, she attempts to flee through a tiny hole but her clothing gets strapped. The flames are growing closer, so Elodie manages to remove her crinoline and flees, hiding in a smaller tunnel. Unfortunately, some fire still gets to her leg and burns it, forcing her to scream in agony. The dragon hears her but cannot reach her since there is no space for her massive size. Once the dragon is gone, Elodie recalls the dull dagger and sharpens it on a rock before cutting a portion of her clothing. The agony in her leg is excruciating, but she pushes on and bandages the wound with a ripped linen. She then opens the diffuser and lights it to use as a lantern. She may now explore the cave. Finally finding a very tight path, she starts crawling through it, but her dress gets caught again, so she pulls until she's free and slides down. Elodie tries desperately to hang on, but her hands are injured and exhausted, so she falls again and the fire in the diffuser goes out. Elodie refuses to give up and rises, holding onto the wall as she walks, desperate to reach the light in the distance. After difficult trekking, she exits the tunnel, almost falling over a cliff. Elodie can still see the light on the other side, so she removes her wedding ring and throws it into the abyss, before stepping back and running to make a giant leap. The opposite side of the cliff is slick, and she can hang on. But happily, as she falls, her belt becomes trapped on a rock. It quickly breaks, but she has enough time to pull out the dagger and insert it into a crack to cling on. Then, she uses the knife to climb the rest of the way and realizes that the light originates from adorable, luminous slugs. After ensuring they do not bite, Elodie pulls off her puffy sleeve and stuffs a handful of slugs inside to create a new light. Then she wanders a little farther and comes upon a tiny lake, but she promptly spits it out when she attempts to drink. It turns out that the cave plants give it an unpleasant flavor. However, ice is forming on the roof, so Elodie stands underneath it to collect whatever drips she can. The ice begins to melt quicker, and the light passing through it seems red, so Elodie opens her eyes to see the dragon tearing through the ice with her fire. 
Elodie flees as the dragon smashes through the ice and enters the tavern to pursue her. But he does not go very far because Elodie enters another tunnel that is too tiny for giant monsters. In this small tavern, Elodie finds a message on the wall that says safe here. She cannot reach and is signed by the letter V. Elodie looks around and sees the dresses of many girls. On another wall, their names have been added over the years, including the V that belonged to a girl named Victoria. Elodie takes time to mourn for them before removing the bandage from her leg, which isn't looking any better. After that, Elodie attempts to sleep while embracing the lamp. Suddenly, she sees the ghosts of prior sacrifices, suffering from anguish, terror, and betrayal. Victoria puts her name on the wall before turning around and telling Elodie that everything is a lie. Elodie wakes up and discovers slugs all over her leg wound. She freaks out and begins removing them, only to realize that their slime has healing powers and her leg is now fine. She applies a slug to her second significant wound and apologizes for underestimating it. Elodie feels better and looks about finding a map on the wall, indicating that at least one female could escape. According to the map, she will encounter three forks in the tunnel and must select the middle one to follow the music and crystals to the outdoors. Elodie then rips off all the bothersome bits of her clothing, writes her name on the wall, and grabs the middle fork, ignoring the dragon's roar. She eventually hears a little melody and goes further to discover a wall covered with crystals. These crystals are the source of the sounds and glow in the sunlight since they are just underneath the exit. A crown with a V on it may be seen nearby, indicating that Victoria escaped. Because the gems are pointed, Elodie removes more of her garment to shield her hands and feet before climbing with the crown. Unaware that the dragon is watching, she attempts to climb, and a crystal fractures beneath her hands, causing her to fall but she holds on to the crown at the last second. Then Elodie hears the dragon close and rushes up to escape, only to realize she's on the edge of a pit high in the mountainside. Elodie is devastated, falling to her knees and crying. Suddenly, the sound of horses neighing alerts Elodie to a troop of horsemen approaching the mountain. She yells for help, but the dragon flies toward her and closes the opening. Elodie takes a step back just in time to observe another message on the wall that reads not safe, signed by V. A corpse is nearby, indicating that Victoria died there and never left. The dragon prepares her fire, only to be stopped by a male voice shouting Elodie's name. While the dragon takes off to investigate, it is revealed that Lord Bayford has arrived with two knights and a guide to find Elodie. They go into the cave with some rope and begin scouring the area, so Elodie uses the sound of their voices to navigate her way back. When she enters a new tunnel, she is stunned to see a nest with three dead young dragons and recalls Victoria's remarks, which lead her to think Isabel was lying. The dragon was not the last of her kind, and she had not begun first. A flashback shows that the king had visited the tavern specifically to murder all the infants. Therefore, the dragon's attack was a kind of revenge. As witnessed at the beginning, she murdered all of the knights, but when it came time for the king, the dragon warned him that death would be too easy and that he should suffer in the same manner she did. Since then, the royal family has fed the dragon three women whose blood has been mixed to pass as royal daughters. Elodie eventually discovers her father and his troops, but she remains hidden for her protection. The dragon appears and takes a knight on a flight before throwing him from a huge height. The knight bounces on the rocks before crashing, immediately dying. While the guide rides off to hide, the dragon snatches the second knight and crushes him beneath her claws before questioning Bayford. He says he is coming to rescue his daughter and attempts to strike with his sword but the dragon captures him with her tail and disarms him before dropping him. While Elodie waits for the proper moment, the dragon instructs Bayford to summon his daughter. Bayford chooses to give a passionate speech about how sorry he is and confesses that he made a terrible mistake before yelling for Elodie not to come out, forcing the dragon to ship him down and stab him in the heart with her claw. 
Elodie can't help but make a noise as she cries, and the dragon begins to look for her. Fortunately, the guard makes a noise simultaneously, and the dragon follows him, assuming it is for Elodie. With the dragon gone, Elodie bids her father farewell and kisses his forehead before he dies. Then, she uses the rope he left to begin climbing out of the tavern. Meanwhile, the dragon discovers the guide and crushes him to death before following Elodie, who manages to climb quickly enough to dodge the flames covering the entrance. Elodie quickly takes to her father's horse, but she barely rides for a few seconds before leaping off to hide among rocks. Because the horse keeps moving, the dragon is duped and follows it to burn it to death. The dragon then shoots fire into the skies, generating a terrible storm, symbolizing the agreement's breach. Isabelle observes this and sends her knights to grab Floria. Lady Bayford attempts to stop them, only to be stabbed in the process. Moments later, after the fire is out, Elodie emerges from concealment and runs into Lady Bayford who has traveled all the way here on a horse while still bleeding. When Elodie learns what has happened, she swears to rescue her sister and returns the horse to the mountain. Meanwhile, Floria is led to the bridge, but Henry refuses to perform the ceremony with a kid. Isabelle ignores him and behaves her blood instead, cutting Floria's hand and throwing her into the abyss. By the time Elodie gets to the bridge, everyone has vanished and the dragon has captured an unconscious Floria. The dragon hasn't killed her yet because she wants to trick Elodie into going for her sister. Elodie, frantic, descends back into the tavern with the rope, using her past knowledge to speed up the journey. After double-checking the map to locate the dragon's lair, Elodie equips herself with her father's sword and sets a trap for it. This trap comprises some armor and rope burning beneath a little flame. Elodie goes away, and as the rope burns out, the armor collapses, prompting the dragon to fly out of her cave in search of the cause of the disturbance. This enables Elodie to slip inside the lair and wake up Floria, who walks slowly due to a broken leg. When the dragon finds the trap and returns to its cave, Floria hides while Elodie waits with her sword drawn. She explains that the queen fooled them all. But the dragon doesn't believe her and attempts to emit fire. Elodie stabs her mouth with a sword to deflect the onslaught, but she still falls over the edge of the lair, suffering burns on her arms and shoulders. While the dragon removes the sword, Elodie falls into a lake and swims out, just as Floria throws another sword at her. Suddenly, the dragon leaps on her and grabs her, wounding her with her claw. Before she can murder her, Elodie draws a dagger and stabs the dragon in the eye, prompting her to throw Elodie away. Elodie then retakes the blade and goes toward the dragon, who has difficulty seeing with one eye. She manages to stab the beast in the chest, but the damage is minor and the dragon snatches her again. Elodie then stabs the dragon's paw, causing it to drop her again. As the dragon approaches, Elodie spots dust bouncing across a curved stalagmite which sparks an idea. Elodie stands in front of the stalagmite and orders the dragon to burn it down, so the dragon breeds her fire. However, Elodie moves at the last second and the fire bounces off the stalagmite, forcing it to fall on the dragon and eventually bring her down. Elodie then shows the dragon this car on her palm, proving that the beast has been murdering innocent girls rather than royals. The dragon requests that she end it, but Elodie drops the blade and refuses to perpetuate the cycle of hate. Then she gets a handful of slicks and places them on the dragon's body, allowing her to heal completely. Meanwhile, at the castle, another wedding is taking place to mislead the third female of this generation. Suddenly, a coin rolls down the altar and Elodie enters, instructing the bride to take her family and go. Then Elodie tells the townspeople they may go if they choose, but only the servants believe her and depart. At that point, the dragon appears and spits fire on everyone there, killing Isabel and everyone in the royal line, bringing the story to a close. As everyone panics, Henry shuts his eyes and accepts his fate, knowing he deserves it. 
The castle collapses quickly, but Elodie walks away with her head held high. A few days later, Elodie, Floria, and a recovered Lady Bayford prepare to sail aboard a ship loaded with gold and food for their people. They agree to run their estate together, and Elodie begins to refer to Bayford as mother rather than stepmother. During the journey home, the dragon flies over and gives a nod of respect to Elodie.